Organized chaos, or what my wife calls Rob's mess. Hey guys, good morning. It's Monday. So yesterday I had a pretty good day as far as models are concerned. My wife decided she was going to go on spring cleaning tour. So while she was dusting high and low, sweeping to and fro, mopping floors and moving furniture, and basically decluttering the gray homestead, it was time for Rob to skedaddle. When she goes on a tangent like that, it is best that I am seen and not heard. Of course, you throw back the uh, customary, hey babe, do you need any help? And her reply is always, no. So when she gets like that, it's time for me to go do my own thing. So yesterday, that's what I did. So you'll notice the 63 Nova wagon in the back. She's all clear coated and uh, I'm waiting for her to gas out before I go and I wet sand it. I have the chassis done, as simple as it is. Uh, I had to drill, uh, I used different wheels obviously. These are off the 60 Starliner. And I had to drill them. I had to do some modifications. And I used an eighth inch, uh, is it copper or brass? It's copper actually, it's a copper rod. And uh, I filed the openings here and I moved those up so I could drop the front end down. It's got a little bit of a stance. Not as much as I would have liked, but it does have a little bit of a stance to it. It looks pretty good when, when the body's on it. And yes, I tried it. I shouldn't have touched the body, but I did. And no, there's no fingerprints. Here's the interior. And it is also body color, but it is flat coated. And um, as simple as this interior is, the uh, front seat is molded in if you're familiar with this kit and the back seat gets glued in. And I decided that I was not going to try to paint the carpet down here at all. Um, and I just painted the mat back here, the rubber mat to simulate a rubber mat. Um, the dash, it's body color as well. The bottom is glossy, the top is not. And uh, what happened was doing this and I came back inside and the top of the dash was still primer and I was like why is the top dash still primer well apparently I didn't paint it that's why the dash is still primer and me being lazy I didn't want to mask it all off take it back out there spray it and then flat coat it so I pulled out the acrylic paints and started mixing looking like a mad scientist I finally came up with a color that was kind of acceptable and it's a shade or two off of the interior color and the body color so it's right in between and I believe that when it all goes together and it's assembled it'll make make more sense and what has been done here so I don't intend on painting the carpet like I said I'm not even going to attempt it I'm also not going to uh, detail the door panels they are lightly molded and I know that if I try to get in there I'm going to mess it all up and it's going to look like a mess so I'm just going to leave it be you're not going to see it anyway, guys. Not on my shelf. It'll look good from where you live. Promise you. So, uh, steering wheel, a little bit glossy. Uh, Malto chrome pen, one millimeter to uh, do the horn button and the horn ring. And she's good to go. Here's the hood. Looking good. Obviously, still needs to be wet sanded. Spot. Is everything copacetic? That's Spot, the shop dog. He's just overseeing all the projects here. He looks like he's satisfied so far. So 65 Corvette. This project, I've been doing this project for months and it's a simple kit. It shouldn't take me months, but I'll tell you. So I repainted the hood yesterday and it does look like it's a shade off. Everybody tells me I'm crazy and it's just the lighting and the contours of the body, but I think it's a shade off. So Rob, why did you repaint the hood? Because if you've ever built this kit, you'll know that it has the pins for hinges here. And what was happening every time I opened the hood, it was wrinkling the paint on the sides of the hood. And it finally chipped out. And it also developed a chip back here. So I went and I threw this in brake fluid and uh, stripped it off. And the paint came off in, in uh, one fell swoop. 
just like a water slide decal, just slid right off. And I was like, cool. Didn't need to do any cleanup or anything. Came in, hot water, some soap, toothbrush, cleaned up all the residue, and uh, took her back out there and painted her up. Silver base, metal clat, metal cast, red, and uh, she's good to go. Oh, you'll notice the bumpers are body color. This one fell off. Body color. The rockers are black. The uh, filler cap is also black. I didn't want any chrome on this car. And I bought Pegasus daggers for it. Because pretty much at the time that I was buying wheels, Hobby Link only had these available. Um, and they were supposed to have a chrome ring, a uh, chrome rim. The inside centers were supposed to be black and the little tiny daggers that shoot off, they were supposed to be body color. And I got them painted and something went sideways on me and I looked at them and they just did not look good. So I decided to throw them in the purple pond and strip them clean. And at first I was going to do them gloss black and then spray them alclad and you know, be done with it. It would have chrome wheels, but then I decided, nope, I'm just going to leave them gloss black. So I got these painted up yesterday, and obviously it's enamel, so it's probably still sticky, and I'm just going to leave them alone. Uh, so you'll also notice this wreck right here. This is what you saw yesterday um, in the aluminum baking sheet and the oven cleaner. A little backstory on this. About six or eight years ago, I was in a building funk and just didn't want to build model cars. In fact, I was fixing to sell everything. I was going to sell all the model kits that I had. And um, so I started doing some snap kits and, and some kits that I considered, you know, quick builds. And this is one of those builds. Um, and if you ever built it, you know, it's it's got its issues. It's kind of finicky in places. And I built it. And basically, I just painted it and assembled it. And from the minute that I finished it and put it on the shelf, I regretted what I did to it. So after passing it on the shelf so many times and looking at it and knowing that I didn't do my best work on it, I decided to take it off the shelf, throw it in a box, and just kind of forget about it. But it's been bothering me ever since. And uh, I know that Ravel's coming out with a new one. Um soon this summer and i'll probably buy that one too but this one deserved my attention so being one of the most intact models in that box of throwaways i was like you know what i'm gonna take this out i'm gonna disassemble it and i'm gonna give it new life and here you see it obviously it still needs a little bit more cleanup before i start to prime and paint it and everything and here's all the parts Everything's there. And surprisingly, this is the first model kit that I've ever disassembled that I didn't break anything. Not a, not a single piece was actually broke, excuse me, broken when I disassembled this. So maybe that's a sign that it deserves to go back together. So guys, I think that, that about covers it. Um, I haven't started on the 60 Chevy pickup yet because I'm, I'm going to be ordering uh, some stuff from Iceman and I kind of want to get everything cleared out of the way and off my plate before I start chopping on that chassis. Um, I don't know. Like I said, that's going to be an ongoing project so it's not something that's going to be done in a few weeks. And then I also entered that shop truck challenge that uh, I'm going to be doing, and I, I've got the kit for that, and I have an idea on where I'm going to go for that. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. So if you like what I'm doing here, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, tell all your friends, and, um, I don't know, keep tuning in to see the adventures of Time Machine Scale Models. Ciao.